right, we're getting really low, so I gotta bring her in. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I, I see the way I'm pointed. Uh, oh, shoot, I'm getting really low. All right, this is not great. All right, so uh, we're gonna go auto level mode. I'm gonna spin around. All right, throttle up, throttle up, throttle off. Oh, shoot, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. It's right there. There it is. Oh, it's yes! What? That was crazy! I don't know why that happened like that. <laughs> what? What? Look at this thing! <laughs> it's like floating right back up. I better disarm. Uh, okay, so... I think that just cost me a battery, but uh... That's my own fault. I got too excited. Um, <laughs> totally worth it though. That was, you know, the, the expensive lessons are the ones we remember the most. That's why I went to Harvard. Cause it, it, yeah, it, like it sank like that. Yeah, it did. I was like watching. Like, and I was like, uh, man, but then it just goes bloop. Right, 10 minutes on there. So yeah, we were flying way too long. Don't be stupid like that again, Adam, in the future. Okay, but good job also. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. You know, one of my biggest fears of flying over water is that I will crash and then I will land in the water or some, something bad will happen and I will land in the water and then my quadcopter will sink and I will never see it ever again because the water that I fly around is very murky and who knows what is at the bottom of it or how deep it is. So that's a really big thing that I want to avoid. And I've found that the best way to avoid that, well, one is to not crash, duh. I can already hear people saying that now. But the next best thing, if something does go wrong, is to just have a big chunk of foam attached to your quadcopter. And in this video, I just want to basically tell you that. That's pretty much it. Now, I'm going to share with you something that I think could be super important and save you from, uh, from drowning your quadcopter, so be sure to stick around to the end of this sentence to find out. In the past, people have used water bottles, like standard 16-ounce uh, plastic drinking water bottles, uh, to make their quadcopter float, and they just strap one to the bottom, uh, because this will float about 16 ounces worth of quadcopter, so around 500 grams. But the problem is quadcopters are getting heavier gopros are getting heavier batteries are getting heavier motors are getting heavier um the electronics you know are getting heavier and it's uh, that's so one is probably not going to work for you you're probably going to need at least two of them so just keep in mind how heavy your quadcopter actually is because it's not unusual to have a freestyle quad that comes up to about, you know, 800 to 1,000 grams. That's really not that strange, depending on the type of battery you fly, etc., etc. So keep that in mind. If you want to use a standard water bottle, you might need to use two of them or maybe three, but at that point, it gets a little ridiculous. And so that's what has led me to trying to come up with a better solution of making my quadcopter float. Also, if you are gonna use a water bottle, be sure to glue or tape the cap to make sure it doesn't come off and, and stays watertight because that would be a very sad thing if the cap came off and then you just drowned anyway and even though you had a bottle on there. So in just a second, I'm gonna get into more detail about this foam chunk that I have on my quadcopter here. But first, I wanna say thanks to the folks at PCB Way for sponsoring this video. PCB Way makes custom printed circuit boards, and that's what PCB stands for. So if you have a design that you want to create, you can send them your PCB file, and they can create that PCB for you. And they can even assemble all of the components from their thousands to choose from and put it on that board so that your product is ready to rock and roll when it comes to your door. If you don't like PCBs, but maybe you have another thing that you need to prototype, they also offer rapid prototyping services to include sheet metal bending, CNC machining, injection molding, and 3D printing in various materials. So if any of that sounds interesting, I'll have a link to PCB Way down in the description below this video. So yes, here we have just a chunk of foam. And what this actually is, is uh, there were kind of sheets of foam that came with like packing materials. And 
this is like the very very lightweight kind of foam it's the kind that's kind of kind of brittle it bends a little bit but then it will just snap um, and it's just the lightest that I could find so I just stacked up three of them they're about one inch tall and, or one inch thick I guess and then I stacked up three of them and then I wrapped them with uh, saran wrap and then I taped the saran wrap to give it some uh, you know strength because the saran wrap is is pretty easy to tear this one is able to float 1020 grams at least that's that's what I tested it to and that should be um, a nice buffer of about a hundred grams I think um, for this particular quadcopter that I have it on now one downside is that it does kind of look like you have a kilogram of an illegal substance strapped to the bottom of your drone so that could be bad depending on where you're flying like maybe if you're flying uh, you know, near border states or something like that. That that could raise some alarm bells. Um, but, you know, this is just kind of a prototype. I'd really want to paint this, you know, maybe like a neon um, green or, or yellow or something, something that makes it really visible um, so that in the event that you do go down in the water, you're going to bob back up and the foam will be visible and it'll make it easier to spot your quad. Now, the measurements for this chunk of foam are roughly eight and a half by two and a half by two and three quarters or maybe three inches so that gives us about uh, 58.4 uh, cubic inches um, and you can just convert that to uh, metric if you'd like and what that should come out to is right about 17 and a half grams per cubic inch is what this will float so you can just weigh your quadcopter and then divide that weight by 17.5 and then that is how many uh, cubic inches of flotation you will need uh, roughly so but again I think the best way to do it is to just actually test it out put some weights on your chunk of foam and actually see how much um, it will float you know put it in a bathtub or a bucket of water or something like that now, I did try using XPS foam, which is like that pink insulation foam that you get from Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever, whatever hardware store. And that works pretty well, but it is actually um, more dense than this foam. So it weighs more for the same amount of flotation. But about 30 grams, and that's like really more than enough for this quadcopter, which uh, is the um, AOS 5.5 frame. It weighs all up about 822 grams. This will probably float 1,000, maybe even 1,100 grams. And it takes up you know, more space. And that is the biggest downside, is the, the volume. Um, so this can cause problems you know, if you are in high wind conditions. Um, and it's just generally not great for flight performance having a you know big volume right here because it gets so affected by the wind now i will say um especially being an fpv drone you know it's very acrobatic and it's moving around in various ways but this seems to work pretty well like i seem to still be able to fly quite well have pretty good control and it's really not ideal i don't love it but that's you know that's kind of where i'm at right now something interesting i did notice is it seems that if you have a big chunk of foam on the top where it extends kind of over the propellers, that's actually much worse for flight performance and, you know, handling. than if you have it just on the bottom. Now this particular one is fairly streamlined. Um, it does extend down, you know, downward quite a bit, and I, I would rather have it, I think, in that configuration as opposed to extending outward 
um, where I think that's going to get in the way of the thrust uh, from the propellers even more. Keep that in mind. If you have it mounted on the top of the quad, it could uh, more negatively affect the flight performance. And I think it has to do with um, the airflow into the propellers at certain angles. But I haven't done you know a ton of uh, thorough testing on that. Um, one downside to having the flotation on the bottom, though, is that for it to work when, when you're actually in the water, you will be upside down. Um, so I'm not even sure if you can turtle mode out of that. I haven't tested that yet. That's, of course, uh, assuming that your electronics are waterproof and that you're able to um, still have a you know radio signal with your quadcopter. So when you have it mounted on the bottom, it's kind of the best in terms of seems to affect flight performance the least. However, when you are in the water, it's not like you can just kind of hang out in the, in the water and then come back out, or at least not that I've tested. This is more of a you know last ditch kind of thing. Like you're not really going to come out of the water but you're not gonna sink either. And then I also have my seven inch quad here. Um, and this one is, it's a little bit bigger piece of foam on here because I plan on having uh, heavier batteries on this quadcopter. Although honestly, the weight of this seven inch is not much different from the weight of the five inch. The motors weigh a little bit more. Uh, the, there's a tiny bit more frame, but it's 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 very similar in weight honestly um but so this one i made a little bit larger a little bit longer <clears throat> and i've just used zip ties to attach this um i do like to add some type of sticky uh grippy material to the front and rear of the quadcopter uh, and then maybe the middle and that way it um doesn't slide around as much um, and in this case, on this FPV drone, I'm using a battery strap. This one is 30 centimeters, and that's a good length. <clears throat> but uh, 30 centimeters battery strap to attach this. It still moves around a little bit. Now, I could really cinch it down, but then I'm losing volume in this foam block. So this, this is not watertight, per se. The saran wrap is really just to keep most of the water off of the foam and delay the time that the foam will soak up the water because it will soak up some water over time. So keep that in mind. On this one here, I used shrink wrap, but it's this really crinkly kind of shrink wrap and I'm not happy with it at all. Um, and it looks like right here, I guess I burned it a little bit too much and there's a hole. So not not ideal definitely not ideal but um you know it still flies all right in this configuration and for the most part the foam is not blocking the thrust from the propellers now i've even tried using this foam for the um, dji mavic air 2 that i fly as well um, this is definitely not ideal but it's it's it works pretty well for um, low wind conditions. However, when there's high wind, having this big block of foam on the top is just really dumb. And it's 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 kind of one of those things where you have your flotation, but are you more likely to crash because of your flotation? Uh, it it's possible. Again, this is not ideal, but um, this is the best that I've come up with so far, which I'm still really not very happy with at all um and it's tricky on this one with the flotation because you know there's your camera and your sensors are on the bottom so you don't want to put your flotation covering that um <clears throat> and it's really quite a compact body um it's already covering uh one of the sensors back here one of the obstacle avoidance sensors in the rear but i have obstacle avoidance turned off uh, because i'm awesome uh no because um well, it, it's the obstacle avoidance is on, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't stop the drone or anything like that. So that's kind of problematic. But again, uh, you know, the, the thing is, is like, <clears throat> it's really important to me that if I'm flying over water, I want to be able to retrieve the footage from the quadcopter. So even if the quad goes down and the, you know, all the electronics get ruined, I can still get the footage back because maybe you got some awesome, awesome shot and uh and then you know some something crazy happens like an eagle swoops down and you know i don't know makes you crash in the water or just something dumb so 
that's why, you know, that's a big thing there. Uh, that's tricky. So it's definitely need to improve that. But that's what I got so far. And I'll also show you a little prototype that I did this quadcopter. It's kind of like an upside down quadcopter. Except, well, it's really just that I changed the orientation of the flight controller, like in the Betaflight software. So it's basically like a regular quadcopter, but it's flying kind of in the upside down configuration. And I had to swap out the um, propeller uh, directions or turn the propellers upside down. And so the idea here with this is that we can put the flotation on the top and then the battery on the bottom. And again, it, this is a, a basically exactly the same as just taking the normal configuration where you have the flotation on the bottom of the quad, but you just turn the quad upside down. So the advantage to this is <clears throat> that you would be able to take off, theoretically, you'd be able to take off after going in the water. And also it might be cool that you could get underwater footage while you're floating in the water and then come up out of the water. But that's just kind of theoretically, I never really got to test that out. So it turns out though that um, it's kind of just a problem having the camera on the bottom of the quad. And I'm not sure if there are any really big advantages because it's more likely to get damaged, the, like the, to have the GoPro damaged, um, you know, if you're flying really low because your FPV camera is actually gonna be above your GoPro. So, eh, you know, that I didn't really end up going forward with much of that, but it's a cool configuration. It looks kind of cool. The only other problem that I can think of is that the motors might be more exposed to debris getting inside of them since they're upside down. So, you know, there's some other issues like that, but you know, it's kind of a cool concept to play around with. The big takeaway that I've found is that the choice of foam really does make a difference. Uh, you really want a low density foam that's very, very lightweight. I wish I knew the name of this or sort of the, the specific details. But the best I can say is it's that type of foam that comes in a lot of uh, product packaging or like furniture type packaging. Um, and it is uh, very lightweight. It bends a little bit and then it breaks. So it's kind of brittle um, and it's not very durable. Uh, you know, it's the kind that'll like kind of fall apart if you uh, if you rip it or something or you cut it, it sort of breaks apart and there's little styrofoam bits that go everywhere and it's super annoying. Um, but that's why I wrap it in saran wrap and then put packing tape around that to give it durability. That's all I got for you for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'd love to hear the solutions that you've come up with to uh, make your drone float on the water. Now get out there and go fly something. We'll get, I mean, we get bars. <laughs>